Hello and welcome, I'm Stormo, and today we're taking a look at Enter the Gungeon, which has a fantastically catchy title tune, by the way. Um, and yeah, uh, I'm not even going to mess around, I've been playing this game a fair bit, let's get straight into it. Um, I will go with... Uh, we'll have a run through with each of the four characters, so we'll start with the Marine, um, and we'll see how we go. Um, and apparently I've got an achievement for selecting the Marine. I have played this game for quite a bit, so I'm not sure what that's happened. But, there is one thing I haven't been able to do in this game yet, after a good four to five hours of playing it, and that is beat the first boss. So, this will likely not be a super long, uh, dungeon. Now, that's new. Okay, so, there was a patch, in fact, I installed it just before I started making this video, and it's clearly added some things, because those titles weren't there before. Um, so, let's talk about what Enter, Enter the Gungeon is and is not. Because I think that's really important to talk about. It is a procedurally generated dungeon crawling um, uh, roguelike game um, centered around crawling around dungeons, um, which is pretty nifty. It has some really cool features. You can see one of them here. Um, so, one thing, because this game is all about shooting people, um, well, shooting things. Um, you can act it actually has a cover mechanic. You can walk up to uh, a table and press A button and it will um, create cover, which is super handy. Um, but the cover doesn't last long. Um, you might also notice that there's a reload mechanic if we just sort of work our way around here. Um, I'm not going to promise that this is going to be highly skilled play because one, I've shown myself to not be that great at this game. Um, and two, I'm trying to concentrate on playing and talking at the same time, and as we all well know with me, that never ends well. So, apologies for that. Um, so yeah. Anyway, um, so it's basically, I, I guess the obvious comparison with this game would be something like Binding of Isaac, um, but I feel like this game is a little bit more unique than that. For a start, it actually has, um, the rooms aren't all just single screen rooms like they tend to be in that game. Um, and there's a lot of variety in the room, so you can see we're in this cross shape room. There's a mini-map up in the uh, top right of the screen there. Um, it says a lot more variety in the room styles and the room shapes. There's also uh, an easily accessible map and a really nifty teleporting system. You can teleport to any of the teleports you've unlocked uh, from anywhere in the game, which is really cool. Um, so. This is a boss room. We're not going to the boss yet um, because we want to keep exploring the floor um, for a lot of good reasons. This guy's a pain to bum, um, usually. He's obviously behaved himself a little bit there because that's why he's a pain to bum. Um, so one thing I probably should be using and I always forget to do it is the roll. There is a dodge roll in this game. So you can see uh, just there that I'm dodge rolling. That's a really important thing, because you actually have invincibility frames while you're dodge rolling, um, which makes dodging bullets a lot easier, and get, getting the hang of the mechanics of the dodge roll, because it also functions as a jump, um, getting that hang of the mechanics of the dodge roll is super important, so you see I dodge roll through that, this book's shoot letters at you. Um, so the game has a really fun sense of humour. It's it's got a really sort of cool look. Remind the look reminds me a little bit of the Escapists, but don't take that as a bad thing. I, I know I don't particularly like the Escapists, which means that a game that looks like the Escapists might be a little off-putting to me. But you know this game does not uh, put me off. You might have noticed uh, that wizard guy there that was shooting out the uh, geometric shapes. You might have noticed that one was a square and one was a. Um, uh, triangle, um, and you might also remember that Square and Triangle are PlayStation 4 buttons. That's because this game is also coming out on PlayStation 4, although I'm playing it on PC, so I'm using an Xbox controller. PC version, interestingly, actually has... Oh, okay, grappling hook. That's an interesting uh, sub-weapon that I'll have to remember how to use. Whoa! Okay, that's nifty. I've not encountered the grappling hook before. So, I don't know if that's because it's new in this... Whoa, that was dumb. So I just walked in and, you know, blew up that barrel. <laughs> that was really bad. <laughs> oh, that was terrible. Um, where are we? Uh, so we want to go to that room there. So we can go to this teleporter right now. And then we can just go to where that room is. So that'll be good. What we're hoping to get is like a better weapon. Oh, these bats. Bats in this game are annoying. Um, 
as you can no doubt tell as they come flying at me. Um, the enemies in this game in general are pretty nifty. There doesn't seem to be a huge amount of variety, but as I said, I haven't actually got past the first stage of the game yet. So, um, it's probable that there's a lot more enemies later on. I'm, I really struggle on beating the bosses, um, has been my problem. Um, so I've been trying, but I've really struggled with that. So, get down here. This is, um, everyone's favourite innkeeper, um, who, uh, will give you useful hints, um, and will offer to sell you things for bullets. You collect bullets off enemies, they drop. Um, you can see I've got 19 of them, so I don't actually have enough money to buy anything. Um, and there's also this guy. I haven't actually figured out the point of this guy yet. Um, he talks about bringing him things and being able to pay him and just bringing him things. He wants to give us bullets, but he won't tell us... I do want them. I do want them, but you've never... You've never told me what I'm supposed to bring to you, mate. Um... So I haven't really figured out what he's supposed to be bringing to me. Maybe, maybe I should like read the internet or something on that one. Um, now that the game's out, I'm sure I'll be able to watch someone else's video of it and uh, figure that out. So, but uh, anyway, get back to doing all the shooting. Um, you might be noticing the way my bullets coming out. That's because I cranked up the aim assist a little bit because I was struggling without it. Um, but of course, you don't need to do that. Um, I do it just for just seemed like a good thing to do, just to ease the difficulty that I was having with the bosses, um, without sort of dramatically overcompensating. A mahogany gun. 100% all organic. It shoots. Huh. Okay. Shoots exploding nuts. Uh, is that everything? No, there's still a room over here we haven't explored. There probably isn't a lot in there, but we don't have an explorer of it anyway. It's probably a fairly small room. Um... Because I feel like we've explored most of this dungeon. Okay, this isn't the greatest gun I've ever... Whoa. Actually, no, this is... This is actually... Huh. This actually seems really strong. I'm, I'm kind of glad we got this uh, to go fight the boss with. Because I reckon this might be a really good gun to fight the boss with. So, let's go do that. Um, and we'll see if I can actually beat a boss in this game. Um, so this will be a first if I succeed, um, and uh, weirdly it will be with the character I probably like the least out of all the characters. Oh boy, it's these guys. The Trigger Twins, yeah, you can actually skip this, but I thought I'd let it, let it play so you guys could see the cool boss intros. Um, and this is where rolling really comes in handy, because trying to get around these patterns. Just trying to avoid everything, and I've only got two hits left because I just took one. And gotta be really smart with avoiding everything. Oh, that's not good. We're not making it. I don't think, but we're gonna try. Just trying to dodge around. Oh, that was too close. Yep. Oh, well. Um, so yeah, I, I, I've really struggled getting past the bosses in this game, um, but as you can see I've made, this is my 39th death, yeah. I put a bit of time into this, so, uh, oh, I didn't mean to restart, oh, whoops. Um, I was going to switch to a different character, so, um, I'll return to Breach, uh, yep, and I uh, will go to a different character. My mouse curse is appearing for some reason, so the game does have a mouse, um, we'll go with the pilot. Like I said, I was going to do, like, all four. Um, but just time depending, I'll see how I go with that. Um, but yeah. Um, as I said, I've really struggled with the bosses, uh, in this game. And I don't know if that's just me, like, not being skilled, which I'm most likely is. Um, or if that's actually a flaw with the boss design in the game, which I, I, I find it hard to believe that that would be. Um, if you hadn't already figured out this guy's, this guy's not hand solo. Um, all, all the characters are sort of an archetype of something or other. Um, yeah, this guy is fairly clearly not Han Solo, just the previous guy is fairly clearly not Master Chief. Um, he has a better gun though, I like I like the default gun this guy has. Interestingly, the two female characters, um, the Prisoner and the Hunter, um, both have alternate weapons that the male characters don't have. Um, so the male characters start with an item and a weapon, so this guy's got his whip that you can use... Um, well, Oh, that's right, they walk walking grenades. Um, the explosion graphics look really cool. 
But yeah, this guy has like that whip thing or whatever. No, it's a lockpick. That's right, that's what it is. Oh, I thought it was a whip. You can get a whip though. Yeah, he has like a lockpick thing, which is really handy, but um, needs to recharge between uses. But it basically means he doesn't need to collect keys um, as much as the other characters do, so that's handy for him. Uh, but the problem with all that is, well, these bats are annoying. The problem with all that is that um, he doesn't have a secondary weapon, and the prisoner and the hunter both get really powerful secondary weapons. The prisoner's isn't as great, it's a shotgun, and it's really strong. Because um, the way the shotguns work in this game is really strong. That's a door, let's see, is there anywhere? We've got to go. Go back here and then head down. So, head this way. Um, yeah, the prisoner has a shotgun that's fairly short range, but pretty strong when you can make it work. And the hunter has a crossbow that. While they both have limited ammo, both those weapon types have limited ammo. The crossbow is just phenomenally good. Um, it kills most of the basic enemies in a single hit. Um, but the downside, of course, is it has to reload after each shot. Um, so, now you might have noticed a red X on the door back there. Oh, whoops. <laughs> I walked into this room and just started shooting and, um, yeah. Um, so, um, just a word of advice. Oh, that's right. The, the pilot's special ability, by the way, is he gets uh, reduced price on things at the inn. Um, but just a uh, word of advice. Don't shoot in here, because uh, that will happen. And you can't use the inn anymore. So we've just annoyed him. Um, so that's cool. But we'll press on. Um, going around here. This guy out. Yep, got him. And you might also notice that uh, a lot of rooms have sort of waves of enemies, um, where there's uh, like three or four um, different waves. Oh, okay. Hang on a second. Ah, okay. We have to go. Uh, we're gonna have to wolf it all the way back around. There's no teleport. Um, but I, I thought that would actually lead to the room that would get us to back to that locked door. But I think we have to go this way and all the way around here. Um, to do that, so that'll be fun for us, won't it? Um, lots of sort of destructibles at the side of the game, which I, I really like the way rooms end up looking really destroyed after a gun battle. Um, I sort of like the way the enemy corpses just sort of lie down and die. You might notice that these enemies are like actually like living bullets, um, and then the shotgun guys are actually living shotgun shells, um, which is pretty neat, but uh, yeah, so that's a cool thing. There's another... Huh. Okay, well, hopefully these lead to, like, stuff. So, yeah, you can see that guy's a shotgun shell. Whoops. Uh, didn't get hit then, which is testament to the power of the dodge roll. Um, so, that's always nice. Just try to take that down. Um, but so far, I think my favourite character is actually the Hunter. I may just play her uh, after this run, depending on how well you do in this run, obviously. But I may end up just playing that character. Oh. Ah. Nothing worse than not maintaining a look on your ammo and realizing you're gonna have to reload. Um, and yeah, you can smash all the stuff and do all that good stuff. This is the way that leads this way. We've got these ninja bullet guys coming at us here. So they're pretty cool. They, they just charge at you, basically. They, they sort of charge up and then charge at you. And as long as you're sort of aware that they're there, they, they're not too terrifying. Books can be really annoying because the bullet patterns they spew out can get pretty intense. You just gotta be aware of it. Um, the game does pride itself on being a bullet hell roguelike dungeon crawler, and I don't think that's too far from the truth. I mean, it, it hasn't got super crazy on me, but I have struggled a lot with the boss patterns and a few other bits and pieces. Um, so in general, it's a bit tricky, but it has has its moments definitely. Um, now let's see what we got here. We got chests and we got. A heart that I don't need, and a cog of battle. Oh, right, <laughs> the cog of battle. Um, that heart will actually stay there, so we can go uh, find out how to get down. Oh, whoops. Uh, this this might not go well. Or is he calmed down? Oh no, he's buggered off. <laughs> I didn't know he did that. Ah. Because I was firing in here, he, he, he left. 
well. Oh well, let's go this way. So that's a thing that happens. Um, I wasn't sure because I've never actually returned to an inn. Oh, these guys. Th these are like ghost bullets and they, they shoot really fast. This is a really small room. See, some of the challenge in this game comes from the room design and then the room being full of enemies. So you have this small room and you can get that room with a fair few enemies in it that you then have to deal with pretty impressively. Uh, I don't have any key. Oh, hang on, I've got a, got a lock pick. Hey, this is a good gun. It's a machine pistol. And it works really nicely. Um, oh, jeez, is that the whole dungeon? I don't need to go get the heart. Where was the boss dungeon? Oh, let's go fight the boss. We don't need that heart. We got full life. We're doing alright. We got a machine pistol too, so let's see what boss... Oh, this guy. Okay. I'll let the introduction play again so you get to see this boss. So he's pretty nifty, um, as you'd imagine. So. Here he is. <laughs> Gatling gull. He's pretty cool. I do like the boss movie intros. Ow. So the active reload, um, you, you might notice that it was called uh, a cog, um, because of course it is a reference to Gears of War, um, and the active reload is exactly what it says on the team, Gears of War style active reloading. Ow, taking a lot of damage now. Just gonna roll around. Avoid him, because he flies towards me. Ow. I had to reload. Damn. This is where you do most of the damage to him, actually, because um, you can just dodge those uh, missiles. going to shoot that big bullet out and he's going to fire a bunch of little bullets and we need to dodge. Oh, whoops. Got a little bit dangerous there. Ah, oh, no. Oh, no. Things are not going well. Where'd he go? Where is he? Oh, he's over there. Oh no! Ah, oh, damn it. Ah, well. Man, I was doing okay that time too. Like I said, never beaten the first stage. Um, so I think that might be almost the close I've got. No, 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 I actually got down with the um, the two the two bullet brother guys. I got 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 them down to like one with almost no health, and then I died. And again, I've done the thing I didn't want to do, uh, which is restart the dungeon, because that's the default option when you die. So just keep going. Um, in fact, this game's very much set up uh, for that. We'll go have a run with the hunter. I'll, I'll skip over the prisoner um, just because I want to show the hunter, because I think she's probably the best character in the game. Um, so we'll have a run with her. Um, and this game does support uh, co-op, I uh, believe. Um, it has uh, four players. And uh, what was I doing? And uh, yeah, I haven't really played it in co-op because I've been more focused on it as a solo experience because that's kind of how I like to play these games, just on my own. Um, but yeah, it does have a co-op mode. Um, and in fact, I'll show you how to access that in a moment. It's probably worth pointing out. Now, I did mention before that uh, this character has a really unique crossbow, and you might notice that I'm not actually using it at the moment. I'll switch to it right now. This is the crossbow that she has. You gotta wait for it to reload, but it does a ton of damage. Um, she also has that really cool dog that follows her around. Um, and you see, yeah, it just one shots these yellow guys. Just absolutely destroys them. So, but the downside to it, of course, is it only has a limited amount of ammo. Um, but yeah, once you get the hang of it, it's a really potent weapon. Um, and so it's almost worth using it just for that. There's also uh, the dog she has, which will apparently go around and collect treasure. I've seen it do it occasionally, like scrounge up like a treasure on the map. Um, it doesn't seem to happen all that often, though. But uh, yeah. Um, so the bullets the enemies drop, you can see one just spinning uh, just near where all these enemies are at the moment. They will actually automatically um, come to you when you clear all the enemies. You can see a whole bunch of them there. Nades are annoying because, of course, they explode, but their explosions will damage the enemies as well. Um, which means that a well-timed shot against a nade can clear a whole bunch of enemies at once, which is really good. Um, get away. There's a lot of bullets sitting there too. 
You won't notice I'm dodging bullets rather than dodge rolling. And you see all those bullets just come straight to me. Wow, I got 42 bullets already. That's the boss room. We don't want to go to the boss yet. We keep pressing through the level. And whoa, hello. Let's take that guy down. And try and get this guy down. There we go. You can roll onto those, so if I do that, you can see I can dodge roll across water. Um, which isn't a big deal in the game, but um, or at least so far it hasn't been a big deal, but very occasionally you might get a treasure chest cap to roll across water to or something like that. I, I imagine later on it becomes more and more of an important thing. So, ah, there we go. and we got a key for our trouble in that room, so that's really handy. Keys open the treasure chests. Oh, that got scary. That guy just came straight at me. They will do that, those guys too. They're pretty annoying like that. A lot of the time rooms lock until you clear all the enemies too, so most of the time you can't actually leave a room again once, until you've cleared all the enemies. Um, I don't think actually that there's any room where that doesn't happen. Uh -huh. So once you enter a room, you do have to clear the enemies. So that's the end. You can see the really nice sort of environmental destruction effects. The, the animations are really cool. Um, I don't mind the visual style, like I said, it reminds me a little bit of the escapists, but, um, and that was a game I was never a huge fan of, but I don't think I could ever fault that game for being ugly. It looks looks fine, so, you know, if, if you're copying the game's look, it's not so bad. Um, but yeah, here we go, here's the treasure chest, and that looks like a... Oh, the snowballer. Ha ha ha, this gun. This gun's pretty cool. Um, it freezes enemies too. Uh, let's see, where are we? Uh, I should go there, shouldn't I? Because there's an unexplored room up there. So I'll head this way. Yeah, we'll see what's up here. It's probably an in. No. Nope. So yeah, and you can see uh, what it does is it creates slippery sort of ice on the floor as well that... Um, slows enemies down and all sorts of stuff. So the snowball is a really nice weapon actually. Pick that ammo up so we get it refilled. Don't mind finding a heart. There's obviously an inn over here and I've got 64 bullets so I can probably buy something good at this inn. Um, what's he got for sale? I can buy a heart. Oh jeez, really? I come in here with 64 bullets and he doesn't even have a gun for sale. He does have half a heart which I will uh, buy and he does have armor, which I will buy, and uh, I can't buy anything else, but that's okay, because the armor is basically an extra point of health, um, that's basically all it functions as. Um, the marine actually starts off with a point of armor, um, which is actually his helmet, and uh, when you take the first hit, you might have seen it before, when he took his first hit, his helmet actually blew off, um, so that's kind of how the marine rocks, because, uh, you know, he's a marine, that's how marines work. You gotta blow their you gotta blow their helmet off before you can start shoot. Oh, that was bad. That was my armor getting blown off. Um. Oops. That was a hideously bad shot. Oh, another key. Cool. There's a room over here too, so let's see what's in here. What we got. Oh, what is that? Ammo belt. Ammo capacity up. Awesome. Okay, I, I am totally cool with that. Um, except for the fact that ammo drops in this game are rare as hell. Um, like The only ammo we, we've got so far since I was starting doing this video was actually the one I just bought at the end. Um, wait, did I buy the ammo? No, I bought I bought a half heart. Oh, it was available at the end. That's the only ammo drop we've seen so far. Um, so let's go do this boss. It's going to be this guy again. I'll skip the intro. Yeah, you can just hit a button and it skips the intro. Focus on... Ow. Oh, hang on, this room. I just noticed something about this room. Yeah, I need to... Oh, no, it's not going to happen for me, is it? No. Damn it. Um, this room had uh, chandeliers that can be dropped down, and I imagine they would do damage to the bosses. Uh, but, yeah, so that didn't go well for us. Um, oh, man, again, I've done it. Again, I wanted to go back to the breach first before we did this, so... Return to Breach. Uh, 
I'll do that. And I will show you how to access the multiplayer mode. Uh, so I'll pick my character. It's the hunter. And if you want to do multiplayer, you need to talk to the cultist who enters co-op. Pick yes, and you'll get co-op. Except, of course, that it's not really co-op because uh, we don't have a second player. Um, yes. Was that was that what I wanted to do? Yeah, it was. Okay, cool. Um, anyway. So, um, just a couple of quick other th things while we're here. I'll show you the options. So, uh, there's a bunch of stuff here. Gun quick switch, which just lets you quick, quickly switch between guns by pressing a button on the controller, which you want. It's on by default. Uh, empty guns in combat. Yeah, so basically you can switch between... quick, quick. It basically means that you won't access any guns you don't have ammo for. Language, all that stuff. Screen shake amount. This is really nice. The game does have screen shake, um, but if you're someone who finds screen shake to be really annoying or it actually upsets you, as I know some people it can, you can turn it right off. Um, so you can adjust its taste. That's a really nifty feature and appreciate the developers offering that. Controller aim look and aim assist amount. This is what I've got turned up. By default, these are both set to about there. Um, and I turn mine up all the way just because I am a scrub. Um, so, uh, <laughs> I, I actually found aim look though, having that turned all the way up was actually not helpful. Um, it actually made it harder. Um, and you turn it all the way off if you want to be a little bit less. Basically, uh, what it does, uh, essentially is it adjusts the camera to sort of move towards what you're aiming at a little bit. Um, it's a very subtle effect and you don't notice it most of the time, but it is there. Um, and yeah, cursor, minimap, speedrun mode, because you can use the game with the mouse cursor. Um, and speedrun mode, if you're the kind of person who likes speedrun things, um, that's mode. I'm not entirely sure what it actually does. I imagine it skips all cutscenes and possibly adds an on-screen timer to the game. So I'm guessing that's what it does. Um, I suppose I can turn it on and try it and have a look. And beast mode, which I have no idea what does, and I'm terrified of opening it. So we're not going to look at beast mode. Um, but I imagine it makes the game super hard. Um, oh, hang on. That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to go there. And I want to go back. Oh, hang on. Oh. That's before I do anything, actually. I want to show you. Um, the controls has a really interesting thing uh, where it'll actually let you switch between... Um, the controller button images. The recommended one wasn't there when I... Th that's new, but yeah, you can switch between PS4 and Xbox controller button images. Um, when I got the game, it was actually defaulted to um, the PS4. Um, so, anyway, uh, I was going to go in uh, with the speedrun mode turned on just to see what that actually looked like. So, we'll, we'll have another run with that on. Um, like I said, I suspect um, that it adds an on-screen timer. Yes, it does. I imagine it also skips the boss timetables. It also makes my control vibrate. Ah, uh, that's not what I want to do. That's what I want to do. So you can get an on-screen timer. Um, the game does give you the time that you played um, anyway, so it's not a huge deal. But uh, this isn't going to be some kind of epic speed run uh, thing. This is going to be me getting where I can go. Killing what I can kill. Um, but yeah, so that, that answers the question about speedrun mode. Um, I suppose I could show beast, beast mode, but I, I think it would be terrifying. Uh, oh, let's try it, let's try it. Let's uh, hit the options gameplay. Uh, I don't think I can change it in the game, but we'll see. Let's turn it on and see what happens. Yes. Uh, back out. So. Did beast mode change anything yet? Or do I have to start a new game for it to change anything? I genuinely don't know. I don't know what it did. Um, well, I know one thing it did. It spawned this guy in a place you wouldn't normally... Oh, wouldn't normally see him. So, whoa. We've got half a heart. That's nice. Really rare to get uh, health upgrades, actually. They only happen very so often. Um, so, oh, that's the boss. I'm sure we'll be beast mode. Uh, actually, given that this is a short run and I just want to test, um, damn, gonna have to do this room. Oh, well. Ah, missed. Okay, um, so let's go back and uh, let's just kind of walk into that boss. We're, we're not gonna, we don't have a hope in hell of beating it, but. I sort of go in and see if it does what I think it does and skips the cinematic. No, it doesn't. So, speedrun mode doesn't skip this cinematic. Um, also, this is our Bullet King. 
He's the one boss we haven't seen yet, and we're gonna get our asses kicked here, but hey, let's uh let's have a crack anyway, eh? Also he does that. And this, which looks more terrifying than it really is, so. You wanna stay out of that because it catches fire, so that's why you don't want to be in amongst all that. Ow. So, uh, where are we? Oh, okay. Taking damage is where we are. Okay. Sorry if I'm not talking, I'm actually concentrating on doing this. Don't know why, because I don't stand a chance, but hey, it's worth it. Oh boy. Oh, you are kidding me. I, oh, I don't know if you guys noticed, but that was like one hit away from beating him. Man, I said I didn't stand a chance, and I nearly actually did it. Wow, okay, well, that happened. Um, oh, we, I was going to get back to the main game, wasn't I? Oh, well. I've done it again. I've done it every time in this video, which is hilarious. Uh, so, so, that's hilarious. So, we'll go back to the breach. Um, but, yeah, anyway, that's... Uh, yes, I am sure I want to go back to the breach. Um, that's uh, Into the Gungeon. It's a uh, pretty fun game, actually. I'm having a lot of fun with it at the moment. I got a review copy of it, obviously, so um, I didn't pay for it. Um, but that said, um, I probably would have, actually, if I had had the experience. Like, I, I didn't feel like the trailer was really going to sell me on it, but um, the, the footage I saw of the game sort of did did sell me a little bit on it when I got uh, info about it early on, and I thought, yeah, I'll try it out. You know, Bullet Hell randomly generated, all that kind of stuff. Sounds like my kind of thing. So, uh, I thought, yeah, no, I'll do that. Um, and, uh, yeah, it turned out to be really cool. It's got a really fun, uh, animated trailer, which I included in one of my news videos the other day, uh, for you to all look at, but, uh, and you can find on YouTube, uh, as well. So it's worth checking out, but overall, it's a really fun game. I have had a lot of fun with it. Um, and I can see myself having more fun, even though I can't beat the first boss. So, uh, I think one day I eventually will be able to, so we'll see how we go with that. But anyway, that's, uh, Enter the Gungeon. Um, highly recommend checking it out. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so that's that. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you all next time.